Thank you for coming back. I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm playing to an audience of one, but it's like okay, because I like bought her an ice cream. I was an only child. Hi, my name is And if you're watching this and you happen to be Jordan Peterson, so today is Friday, May 6th, 2022. And if you're from the future, let me give this scoop. So on Monday, a draft opinion from the Supreme Court of the United States was leaked that revealed that they are planning on effectively overturning Roe versus Wade, which if they do, could be devastating for the health and well-being of women and people with uteruses all across the country and a D-Day for bodily autonomy rights worldwide. Roe of Roe versus Wade, and Roe would know, you know, said this is gonna take us back 50 years. Jesus Christ, we need to cut emissions in half by 2030. We need to net zero them by 2050. The billionaires are running around in spaceships. The Democrats don't know their head from their ass. We don't have another 50 years, which I think means it's time to choose violence. To quote Nina Simone, it ain't about to be nonviolent, honey. I worked with this guy at a hardware store. He was like 68. He worked about two minutes a week. He couldn't pick a name. His name tag literally said Jim slash Rudy, like someone had to type that out and like hand it to him. You know, and then people would, yeah. And then <laughs> people would come into the store that he knew and he'd be like, hey, it's Dave. It's me, Dave. It's, he was 68, he had like a bad knee. Sometimes he'd violate my personal space and say things like, oh, you're gonna see the devastation of climate change in your lifetime, but me, I'll be long gone by then. And I was like, you know, we could make that a sure thing. Oh, social security is gonna be running out by the time you're my age. It's like, you could just stop going to chemo. Oh, I knew more about this man's prostate than I ever wanted to. I'd like to read you this passage from The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, which was published in 1905 and written by a German dude named Max Weber. And it says, the Puritan wanted to work in a calling, we are forced to do so, blah, 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 and begin to dominate worldly morality, blah, 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 building the tremendous cosmos of the modern economic order. This order is now bound to the technical and economic conditions of machine production, which today determine the lives of all individuals who are born into this mechanism, not only those directly concerned with economic acquisition, and do so with irresistible force. Perhaps it will so determine them until the last ton of fossilized coal is burnt. That was published in 1905. Pretty cool, huh? I learned this word the other day, dearth. Do you know this word? According to the OED, it means scarcity or lack of something. According to Inside Climate News, there was a dearth of climate change in pop culture. So they said just 2.8% of scripted shows and films produced between 2016 and 2020 mentioned at least one of 36 climate change related Keywords, according to a new analysis of over 37,000 scripts conducted by the University of Southern California, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, now you know the meaning of the word dearth. The entertainment industry fails us. The news fails us. It's time to start breaking some kneecaps. The other week, activist Wynn Bruce of Boulder, Colorado, died after setting himself on fire outside of the Supreme Court during an Earth Day climate demonstration. The situation was apparently a horrifying spectacle, and that day CNN wasted no time sending a notification straight to my phone that said, Melania Trump has left the White House in dire need of new glassware. The most formidable climate stuff, right, since the beginning of the crisis has been like in scientific journals, and I would rather like eat in an Applebee's than read one of them. Because like every year, six months or so, they'll publish something that's like, you're all gonna die, and, and um, Ah! And you know, and we the people are like, well, well, IPCC, what do we do? And they're like, well, I don't know, probably nothing, right? Like, this is for governments. And then we're like, <laughs> and um, Boris Johnson and Joe Biden are like, <sighs> but wasn't the UN like invented to stop like the next Nazis, you know? Which they're back, by the way. I know this guy who's like Hitler. His name is Darren Woods. He's the CEO of ExxonMobil. I don't have his address. I wish I did. But I do know that the headquarters of ExxonMobil are in Irving, Texas. Something interesting about this latest IPCC report, though, is that it calls out colonialism. It says that colonialism is one of the root causes of climate change and continues to be an exacerbator to this day. Which is kind of like going up to your friends and being like, guys, I think Bert and Ernie are gay. It's like, yeah, dude, keep up. 
So yeah, so now I wonder about hurting people because the media's failed us. You know who hasn't failed us though? Is our girl Greta. That young woman can slam dunk on anyone, including and especially Chief Climate Envoy John Kerry. He was like, 50% of what's gonna save us from the climate crisis has, I don't know his accent, hasn't been invented yet. She was like, yeah, Gandalf's gonna save us also. When speaking again of Washington, other than the New York Stock Exchange, all the worst people in the world work at K Street in Washington, D.C. Like this stupid motherfucker, Keith McCoy, who was a climate lobbyist for Exxon, who got caught squealing about the company's lobbying tactics in D.C. He listed some senators who are like the most crucial to Exxon's operation. That list goes something like Mark Kelly, Chris Coons, Mark Rubio, Kristen Cinema, Joe Manchin, Shelley Moore Caputo, John Testa, Maggie Hassan, John Barrasso, Steve Daines, and John Cornyn. And this is particularly for Manchin and Cinema. Next time you sit on your ass and block something, such as the climate section of a massive spending bill or a federal increase in the minimum wage. I want you to think about all the people who weathered the plague to get this bowl of cottage cheese in office. And I want you to think about Stacey Abrams. I want you to think about her the next time you like want to go on TV and like shoot a piece of paper with a hunting rifle. Anyways, what's this? You're being subpoenaed. By who? By the FBI. Just for my sake. 